Everything that was became what is. And what withers and dies is but a like the larva in its cocoon. Hey everybody and welcome to today's episode of the Corona Talk. Uh, it's a huge pleasure and an honor as well to have a wonderful musician here and also a wonderful good old friend of mine, uh, the frontman of the German band Faun. Please welcome him. Thank you, welcome. It's, uh, thank you very much for inviting me over. It's interesting to talk about stuff here. I think it's a good opportunity to tell the people what we do right now, our point of view. It's a good chance for me. Thanks a lot. Uh, thank you for being here. It's really awesome. So, um, you know, I, I mean, we've known each other since many years. We played together a lot. We did so many things together. You actually played on two of our albums as cast musicians. But ever since, uh, you know, a, a lot happened. So to start with, how are you? Thank you. I'm actually very fine. So it's like I live on the edge of the forest. I can see the forest from my garden. I have a huge garden. So okay. when you see movies about the end of the world, the apocalypse, you always imagine everybody's running around like looking like Mad Max and it's the gray sky and everything. And in Germany right now, it's the opposite. Spring really kicked in. We have a beautiful weather. I'm sitting in my garden, enjoying myself, doing garden work. So it's everything else but the crisis here. But of course, if you switch on the news or if you think about yeah. some other friends of you, then you get really worried. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, good to hear your finds. So like, from what I understand, the place you live is a little bit like comparable to the Lord of the Rings, you know, that the whole world kind of sinks into war and you're still living in the Shire, taking care of your Hobbit friends. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point of view, actually. Yes, actually. I moved, uh, I'm living now, I moved actually, so I'm living now in the very west of Germany. It's called the Saarland. And I it's only all, live here yeah, for two right. years now. It's a beautiful region. And it's good. It's a nice region. We have a lot of nice nature, but we have a lot of beer drinking people here. So maybe it is the Shire and I didn't find out yet. So <laughs> <laughs> it's good. Now I will see you with another point of view, maybe. Good. And how yeah. are you doing? How are you doing? Where, where are you right now? Uh, I'm at home and, uh, well, we also live in a very small village. I think it's around 300 people here. So there's a lot more dogs and horses and cats than humans, which is nice. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we also have a huge garden, and so yeah, we're it's pretty much it's pretty much the same here. So we, we don't feel much of the crisis. Um, yeah, but but obviously, I mean, this is just you know the, the personal aspect. Um, but uh, otherwise, it's it, it is definitely weird times and. Uh, you know, like all the you know the restrictions if it comes to shopping and stuff, it's it's kind of weird. I mean, our lives didn't change too much, to be honest. But it but it, it is a special and partly also scary situation, and obviously for us as a band, it's also it changed a lot. So how is that for Found? Uh, what what what's going on in the Found Camp right now? Um. So it was a. There is never a good timing, but the timing was good for us because uh, Laura is uh, very pregnant. So luckily she's uh, waiting for her first child. So we anyhow had a break in the spring with very little concerts. And right. also there was a big change because Fiona, our other lady, she got a big heritage. So uh, she has now a big farm with a lot of stag and many animals. And yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. She yeah, wrote it like that, exactly. Yeah? We wrote it, and that was a good news. I was really happy for her. Um, but of course, she decided I cannot keep both intact. It's such a lot of work, so she stepped out of town. So this was a big, big step yeah. for us also. Um, but we had many changes in the past. So of course, it's sad. Of course, you have you have some structures and some you have an understanding in music without needing to talk about it. But also, if new people come in and new influences, it helps you to reinvent yourself. 
So also it's always a new opportunity to restart the wheel, to get some new influence, to not repeat the same thing over and over again. And exactly this is the phase we have now. And then it's this big, I feel like, uh, you know, the clock is going to zero and now it's starting again. So the whole world is kind of starting again. And it's exactly a fitting with our personal agenda. So also for us, we were just like in this uh, down and now we're getting reborn, hopefully like a phoenix or something nice. But let's stay positive, of course. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, right. I remember it's a, it's a while ago that uh, I think Nicole was was uh, texting with uh, Fiona and she, she she said something about this. So, uh, where does she live? Like, um, this is middle of Germany. She also moved for this, and I haven't seen it myself, but it seems to be really huge, like eighty thousand hectare or something. And what? Yes, it's, it's, and uh, so many animals. I don't know what's God. what's happening there. But then she realized it was of her grandma before, and she realized it's such a big responsibility. And of course, yes. people think ah, oh, they see like oh, they have a couple of concerts, but it's not only the concerts. It's traveling days for the concerts. Yes. It's rehearsing. Yes. It's just going in the studio. So I actually I would say I'm two third of my time away away from home. Yeah, yeah. It's the same like you, I think you're traveling even more than us. Yeah, yeah. I, it is exactly like that. Yeah. Okay. Wow, but but that's amazing. That sounds amazing. The, the Fiona's place. I would like to see it at some point. <laughs> it's like it's it's also good because uh, Faun is the horned animal, of course, of the mythology of the, like a follower of Pan and something. And now she moved yeah. from that one to, to stacks. So she's pretty keeping the same kind of uh, yeah, workspace, cool. but um, not so musical. Yeah. Yeah, but it sounds, yes. sounds really beautiful. And, yeah. and But do, do you already have someone to step in for her? Or, or are you looking for new musicians? Or what's the no. situation? Uh, I'm, um, we have, uh, in July, we have uh, a big article in Sonic Sedusa magazine. We want to release it there. So I don't want to um, unwrap the, the Easter egg already, although Easter okay, is passed. Yeah. But sure. we found an amazing person and uh, I don't believe in coincidence. Too many things happen in my life where I think, no, this cannot happen. And so um, in this case also, I met a musician via coincidence and then we had such a good understanding musically. And I thought, yeah. Yeah, this is fantastic. And we were playing also a lot of different string instruments. She's really good in string instruments. And we had such a good connection. I thought, I really want to make music with this person. But what was happening, of course, I was too busy, you know, it happens, like there's so many things to do. And then I have another band project of folk noir going into English uh, folk music. I thought maybe it's time to restart folk noir because I want to make music with this girl. And then it happened that Fiona told us, hey, I have a problem. I made this heritage. I need to step out. I'm very sorry. And first it was the biggest shock. But then I realized, hmm, maybe I asked the girl, maybe everything is changing. And then I really didn't know it. I asked this girl and she said, yes. Um, I actually played in a medieval band for eight years and I, my main instrument was bagpipe and flute. I thought, this is not possible, I thought, this is great. <laughs> and so we have the most lucky situation that we have an amazing uh, replacement or another new person coming in. And the spiritual part is also really good. She has the same point of view like us. So I think it's a good opportunity for us to go on to reinvent ourselves. Uh, but of course, it's always a pity if something somebody's leaving you because yeah. Fiona had great qualities, and we will miss her, no doubt, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I fully, un I mean, I totally understand that. I mean, it was maybe similar with us, you know, like in the, uh, a lineup change is never something nice and never something good. And also, to me, there's there's never a replacement really to for you know, like no one can be replaced somehow. But but there's it's always like a new chapter in in the band's history somehow. And, but as you say, like I think it's uh, as, as hard as it sometimes can be, or sad or whatever, it can also always be a chance if you use it as a chance. And so I'm I'm very curious to see and hear what what's happening with Down in future. That's super cool, super exciting. 
Yeah, it's also um, another thing like um, it's a good phase because our record company is finished. So this is really nice because uh, we had this really nice time in the past where it was like a lot of um, public, uh, I don't know, we had this TV campaigns, everything, major labels, something. So it was really helping us a lot. But there's also a lot of stress and responsibility coming from it. And this is also, it came to an end exactly at this point. So this is also helping us to reinvent ourselves. And what's happening now, we have this uh, freedom. So we're just writing songs, we make music of what we want to do. You know, there's nobody talking into you. And this feels amazing also right now. So having this new group, having this new musician who's really eager, hey, I want to make music, she's really fantastic. And she's playing, before she played concerts in front of 10 people sometimes. It's so sad the best people have no audience. And so it's so nice to have this new ambition, to have this freedom. So actually for us, it feels, as a group, it feels really good right now to have time, to have uh, freedom, creativity. So this is good. But of course, it would be nice to have one or two concerts in between. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but still, this, this all sounds really amazing. I'm really, really happy for you guys. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Cool. And with you guys, what are you doing? Um, ah, sorry, I just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I, I mean... The CD, actually. Well, uh, that's like... Actually, it was just... Uh, it's one year anniversary. So, yeah, we, we, we had an album out last year. Yeah, it was the acoustic one, huh? Uh, no, no, it was... Uh, there was one after the acoustic one. Very, oh very you actually, oh yeah, God, time flies, I know, it's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> no, but um, yeah, right now um, we uh, we started, well, working on new material is probably too big a word, uh, but, you know, I, I started uh, collecting ideas for some new music and, yeah. and, and we actually, I, it is, as you said, it is somehow an interesting time, as, as drastic and, and crazy as it is, and also scary at some points. But uh, it's 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 still super interesting, and I think from from what what I can see so far, our our new songs for the new album will will actually get some new kind of a direction. Um, and it's oh. I mean not not so much musically, but all, more like you know regarding the lyrics and that also obviously affects the music heavily at least in Elvati and like the the ideas we got so far are like how do you say much more kind of spiritual and i, I and, just wanted to say because many uh, people are very curious right now so so go into detail yeah it's just you know like we we made so many experiences the, the last 12 months i mean as a band yeah. partly but also like as you know as persons in our personal lives and <clears throat> we just got this feeling that that a lot is happening and a lot of things are changing you know outside but also in, inside in us and yeah. It's I, I I cannot even be concrete. I mean, it's too early. You know, thoughts are still yeah. getting shaped slowly right now. But it's, it, like let's say like the, the charisma, the atm atmosphere we are feeling regarding the new songs is something like okay, it's about it's about time to, to step up and stand for, you know, certain things and, also for certain you know, uh, thoughts and convictions. And um, also to to kind of carry the, the, you know the the wisdom and the knowledge of our ancestors stronger, more strongly into the world, not just you know in a poetic way and you know in a sense of dealing with history, but uh, it's it's much more about uh, to say, look, there is wisdom there. And these people, doesn't matter if they lived 2,000, 3,000 years ago or not, they, they fucking had something to say. And we are at the point in our lives and the point in our world where it's like needed to hear these words again and to step out and to live by these words and to live by these wisdoms. Not just to be a band on some topics, but to actually live that life. And... 
you know that that's more or less like the the, the main thoughts we have regarding the new album right now yeah. and yeah so that's that's interesting and, and it, somehow it's also kind of fits in in the current situation you know like that there's just there's just a, a lot of things going on and um yeah it just makes you think and that's sometimes difficult but you know it's always uh, also a good thing and, and so yeah we, we started working on or gathering ideas like for new music new songs and but other than that i mean we would be on tour right now we would be in russia and right afterwards we would be playing a lot of uh, festivals and none of them is actually happening we just learned yesterday <coughs> um or not none of them but at least uh most of the ones in germany are not going to happen yeah and uh and literally no one knows how the situation is developing so we don't know like if we can if we can drive our tours in fall i mean obviously we hope for and we still work for them but um yeah you just you cannot say at this point and so yeah we Besides thinking about new songs, we are basically at home in quarantine and try to get uh, keep ourselves busy. Um, but this is luckily, I think this is what we always did. Like many people cannot imagine, they go to work, follow somebody else's instruction. But as a musician, you always you're your own boss. You have to make a schedule. When do I want to re release a CD? What do I write? What song? What is inspiring me? So I think luckily, some people like us, they always made their own time schedule. Yeah, yeah, And this is really helping, I think. For example, we wanted now a lot of concerts, write the CD next year. Now we start, okay, we start writing songs because there's so much to say right now and there's so much happening and we have time. So yeah. that's good for us. But I just, there's one point I really want to say because also today I was talking with a booking agency and an organizer, a promoter was uh, calling me. People are really, they don't know what's happening. And this is important, like, um, we are not sure if some festivals in Germany or some open air concerts will be cancelled even before end of August because now the law is there's no big events happening. But what is a big event? So this is up to the <coughs> district of Germany actually. Oh, I, I, oh, okay, I didn't know that. I, I actually thought, I mean, I, I think it was just yesterday when a German um, yeah. Uh, government said that like big uh, events are cancelled until the end of August. So I thought it's clear that all these festivals are cancelled. So, but that's not the case, you say. Well, I think a big heavy metal festival won't happen. But uh, found we do sometimes play open air concerts, uh, for example, in a nice medieval uh, inn on the countryside for like 900 people. And so if this district of Germany says, well, it's only above 1,000 and it's open air, it's allowed. So it's not 100% sure Okay. this cannot happen. So this is what I told the people also today. I said, well, if we know for sure it's not going to happen, we make it official. We put it on the homepage and then we give you at the right time. We give you at the same moment, we give you an alternative date. Like, hey, this concert moved to this date and the tickets stay valid. Okay. I think that's very important. But right now, it's not 100% clear that every open air festival before end of August is cancelled. So this is why it's not officially put online of every festival. Okay, this is very good to know. Like, I, I yeah, I, I just interpreted it that way, but that's, yeah. that's good news. That's even better to hear. Cool. I, I, for example, this is a really beautiful medieval inn in Germany, East Germany, we play every year. And I just told them, well, you see, just coming to you guys and playing for 800 people, everybody's keeping distance. Of course, we take it serious, but this would be so nice to have at least one or two concerts in the <laughs> summer because we, we miss the whole family, the band members, we miss the audience. And maybe there's a tiny glimpse of hope, then of course we take it because it would be really nice to have a few concerts at least. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it would be. And politically, yeah. I think if they put children into school, I think this is more dangerous because children, they cannot keep the distance as having adults, for example, an open air summer concert where you can make distance between the chairs. Some of our concerts are seated. I think this is not that dangerous even. Yeah, that, but that's something weird that I didn't understand. That's also like what, I, what I heard yesterday that on one hand, they, they're postponing, uh, I mean, pro prolonging the, the restrictions. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, they were 
thinking about opening the schools again. So like that, that I did not get at all. Like, I mean, what sense would that make? Because children definitely don't keep dif distance. Exactly. They only want the elderly children and also they, um, of course, it's so complicated because if they want to start the eco yep. economics again, they need the children to be somewhere. Otherwise, people cannot work if the children yeah. are at home. It's so fucking complicated. I don't want to be a politician because everybody is complaining right now about you. You can't do it, right? So I know it's yeah. really difficult. But um, today also my girlfriend got into it. She says, well, this is because uh, you get no this support here in German. There's some money you get by the government. This is not working for musicians or artists. And they said, no, you have to make the really unemployment money officially. And this is crazy. So I know many musicians who are really struggling now because it's so difficult, especially for creative people. And there I have to say that the government really, um, really failed. Sorry. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's bad to hear. Yeah. yeah, and it's very sad because there's so many nice musicians and who are not in the fortunate situation of having big tours and big concerts. And they really live off every concert. And especially mm -hmm. those, I think, they're, they're, it's really hard for them. And I really fear for them. It's, it's really not yeah. nice. This is, yeah, that's, that's really terrible. Yeah, it is. Uh, yeah. Just yeah. I think go to India, for example. This is crazy. It's also so sad if you look into the world. It's always the rich countries have it better, and the poor people like India. The same day that they did this whole quarantine situation, people had no food at home. It's terrible, and now it's happening in Africa. Maybe Corona is starting. So I think I really feel for the poor people, and the whole gap is getting bigger and bigger. It's always uh, uh, more. Poor people and more rich people. This cannot be in the world. It's, it's yeah. very sad. Hopefully, it's good to have a little restart. Although everybody says, well, the rich guys will get even richer with this crisis. Yeah, that's. I, I think that's quite likely, and I also don't think that you know, let's say those ominous, rich, mighty people, whoever they are. I don't think yeah. they're they're ever gonna change because I I personally believe they're they're too fucked up in their souls to get, you know, to to get it yeah. right at some point. Uh, I mean, I still hope for them, and actually, I yeah. feel sorry for them. But uh, but then again, I probably also don't care too much. But I think when I look around, I mean, in the beginning, when people are saying, "Yeah, this might be a chance, and people might change." I was super skeptical and I, I, I was always like, oh, I, I, I don't believe in humans anymore. Like, I, I don't think they're going, I don't think we're going to change. But honestly, meanwhile, I, I, I actually do see some, some positive developments that came out of that whole thing. And actually, I mean, it's just little things, you know, like just like in the village, like even the way people look at each other, like, I mean, it's crazy. People started smiling at you for instance right. and just like little details uh, and and little things that that always seemed like self-evident suddenly you realize okay they're not they're actually beautiful things and you can lose them and yeah. so that i think for a, a lot of things and a lot of people this this whole crisis kind of helps to to appreciate such things again and yeah, I think that's that's a very beautiful thing, and that's what I observed the last few weeks. I don't know if it's gonna last, obviously, but I think, yeah, it it's after all as as terrible it is and as horrible it, it was for for thousands of people who suffered yeah. from it. Nevertheless, there might be some some positive impact of it. I, I really I also, hope for that. I I stay really optimistic. I think with this crisis, I'm not totally sure, but for example, like I'm very, I'm very frustrated about uh, the environment, about uh, you know nature that is going really downhill in Brazil again. They chop away so many forests, and I've been like this, thinking like this, uh, like more than twenty years, and I've been working for Greenpeace. And uh, but there were so many people arguing at you and nobody could understand your point of view and you were just a hippie to them. But yeah. now if you look now into society, it's easy to buy vegan food in every supermarket. Everybody says, yeah, yeah the environment is important. And I think there's a massive change in the minds of the people right now who really understand, no, this is essential for all of us. And I think this is good. And 
also you said before, like um, I had the feeling already back then, 20 years ago, that people were searching for something spiritual yes. because they were not really Christian anymore, but they didn't find a replacement. And luckily also with found, we, we found a little gap to say, hey, there's more than just medieval stories and ballads. There's a meaning behind it. There's a point of view. There's an understanding of nature that we lost. And so yeah. many people are getting back to this right now and yeah. start to reconnect to, to the ground where they live in and try to their own tradition and culture. And this gives them, especially in a crisis like this, this gives them a stability, I think. And I, I see a positive chance also for people reconnecting to what is really important. Yeah, I believe so too, which is very, very beautiful, actually. Yeah, in a good way it is. Like, also people start to think more regional, I think, like to, uh, more locally. That's also a great, great thing that I noticed. Like, even politicians actually realize that it's probably not the best idea if we just fully depend on other countries. Super cool, actually. I think this is also so important in the world. And also in general, it was always the point that the, the rich countries were taking so much away from the poor countries. And now you have the thing like immigration coming and now they complain, but it's our money, you know. But of course, people need to come because you took all the way from them. It's such a <laughs> short sighted vision some people have. Yeah. And, yeah. And now we see, hey, we're actually all sitting in one boat. The world is just, it's so connected right now that if there is a disease somewhere else, it's also getting to us. Maybe it's an eye opener for some people. Let's hope so. Yeah, really. Let's, let's keep our fingers crossed that this impact actually stays. Also, when, once the crisis is over, that, that, that's actually my biggest concern regarding this, like that once the crisis is over, like, Everybody is still, you know, uh, thoughtful for, for a few weeks and then everybody forgets and goes back to the old way of life or something. But let's just keep our fingers crossed that this doesn't happen. And I, I definitely think that for, for a lot of people, this was kind of an eye opener. And yeah. that's, that's a good thing, definitely. Yeah, also to see what is really what is important. What do I need to, to have a good life and something? Maybe more people think, oh, for example, what I don't understand, so many people are rushing into big cities. Everybody wants to live in a big city. No space being crammed up there. And, but you have internet. It's so easy to work from a country house now. And uh, maybe people realize that, hey, the big city is nice for a little party or something once in a while, but actually being on the countryside is much nicer because it's so sad in East Germany, the villages are empty like ghost towns. In Berlin, the rents are going so crazy high, nobody can afford it. And to get a little more balance there, maybe this is helping a little bit right now. I don't know. Okay. I, I, yeah. I didn't know that, really. So like in Eastern Germany, there's uh, most people actually go to cities and the, the villages are like half empty or what? Yes, there's so many really half empty villages and only old people stay there. And this is also so sad for the infrastructure. Yeah, yeah of course. It's crazy. Yeah. I, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. Strange. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, I, but I think it's all over the world. The big cities are growing in a crazy speed and the villages are like, I don't know. But luckily, there's a few good bands who sing about a pagan music and about like the old myth and tell the people to go back to the villages. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we have a little bit of influence. I hope maybe, but yes. you never give up hope, you know? Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. 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 Hey, and, and how it is, I, I mean, you, I, I think you guys can leave the house, but you're not allowed to have contacts with other people or something like that right yes exactly uh, like supermarkets are open but you shouldn't meet with people and i really take it also very serious because mm -hmm. i really don't meet with any friends nobody only with my girlfriend here at the house because i think the more everybody keeps their own sure. yeah takes it serious the faster it's over so we all need to work together here and i think also, I'm happy for the government to say, hey, we need to have drastic actions. I think normally I'm not that, uh, you know, following the government. But in this case, I think it's good because there's not a lot of arguing around. No, let's do it for a couple of weeks. And then we have the whole rate is going down and hopefully life can go on again. Mm, okay. But uh, so, so how, how do, you, do you and your girlfriend, how, how do you personally handle it back at home? Like, uh, is there... 
you know, besides working on new music and all that, but just, you know, in your private life, is there, like, did it change a lot? Or what do you do, like, to to not go crazy? <laughs> I mean, you know, like, if you, if you cannot see friends or something, you're basically stuck in a house. So, like, how are you guys handling that? Uh, I, I think <laughs> we both realized that we, I think we have a problem anyhow, because we are very happy to be alone. Like, uh, then we realized, oh, actually nothing has changed so much because we also live in an area where it's not like crazy party people around and it's not the most beautiful parties and festivals. So where we live, there's not a lot of things happening. Of course, okay. then you have concerts and festivals. Like right now, I would be in London playing a concert, staying there for a week. Uh, in two or three weeks, I would fly to Japan, you know, then you have this and we do a lot together because then you have, you can combine the work and the private life. So this is where you meet great people. But here, if we have one or two weeks off normally, we really live kind of isolated and we really like it also because we're both hermits doing our work and this makes us happy actually. <laughs> yeah. And luckily, my girlfriend, she, she's an artist also, she's, she's doing illustrations, okay. and we just released a fairy tale book where she was doing like uh, 50 illustrations of fairy tales. I was speaking fairy tales, recording a CD, writing some songs for it. And this is just the perfect timing. Like, this is also keeping us financially uh, surviving because people love to read fairy tales now at home, especially with children. And uh, now we just we work on next stuff already. She's drawing a lot. I make new songs. So uh, luckily, for example, if you make music, there's so many things you can learn and just uh, progress your own skills. So I, I need a couple of more years on quarantine to really get bored in some way. Cool. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't, of course. <laughs> Sorry, people. <laughs> Uh, but it's good. I mean, it's actually exactly the same for us. I mean, yeah. it's uh, it, it was. No, it's not funny. I mean, nothing is funny about this. But it was still, you know, like all around us. Like we we hear from friends or relatives that are kind of going crazy. You know, like they they have homeschooling and then like uh, the, the the father works in the home office and they're just stuck all together and they're slowly going fucking mental. And yeah. and for us it was like you said we were like hmm, okay yeah we're sorry for you but for us it's actually nothing changed you know I mean live our life like we always live but yeah I mean obviously it's it's not like that for the majority of the people I think so yeah that's that's basically why I asked it I was just interested but good to hear Robert. good for you yeah. And it's important also, we, we, with Fun we started a uh, thing, we have a different Facebook post where we uh, call them quarantine tips, but we try to inspire people to do something useful. I think it's no purpose to now watch every series on Netflix because you yeah. have all this extra time and time is one of the most valuable goods we have. Just use the extra time. And for example, I was giving tips to say, hey, these are nice tutorials for yoga. Just if you cannot do the sports you normally do, just buy a mattress and just start yoga at home. There's tons of good tutorials on YouTube. Or how to make your own Berlauch pesto, like a wild garlic and stuff like this. So we have tons of ideas and we put it online to inspire the people, to tell them, hey, use your time, do something new, learn something, because this is also a great opportunity actually for yourself. This is awesome. Uh, yeah. What? Where can I find this? What's the name of this, this Facebook page? I want, I want to check it out. Uh, found. Found official. Oh, oh it's, it's on there. Yeah, yeah. Just, uh, everybody of the band say, okay, you do something. And everybody did something okay. different. Laura did a vegan recipe for cheesecake, for example. I didn't know it exists even, a vegan cheesecake. <laughs> So everybody was putting some ideas out. Or I tell the people, hey, if you have a guitar at home, this is how you could try to use different tunings to go creative. And I think hopefully this was helping the people because they sit at home and sometimes you just need a little push or a different little idea. And I think this is also our responsibility as artists to, to share ideas, to inspire people to do something themselves. Totally agree. Yeah. I actually, I'm sorry, maybe I'm doing too much here, but I also, I started to organize my own festival, actually, a convention, because this was exactly my feeling. I said, it's so sad that it's so separated. This is the audience, this is passive, and this is the band or artist, they are active. 
and I saw it on different conventions all over the world and I haven't seen it in Germany so I started to organize a convention where you have concerts but also you have a lot of workshops and panels so you could learn how to juggle, how to make percussion frame drum or tarot, how to do tarot reading or to paint yourself fantasy illustrations and this was a really big idea and it was three years of work but it was planned on October 2020 and now of course I have to postpone it to October 2021 because, yeah. it, was too, because yeah. it was too risky. But I think yeah, it's yeah. important to push the people like, hey, try it out yourself, do something for yourself because it's so healthy just to make music and to sing at home. Even if it doesn't sound good, it's the, one of the most healthy things to do. Yeah. yeah. This is awesome. This is awesome to hear. Cool. Really cool. You're doing that. Yeah, it was at first yeah. it was a nice idea and then it was a lot of paperwork, so I hated it at some points. But now I came that far that I for sure push it through. But um yeah, I, you have to be realistic also because it's financial risk and everything and it happens yeah, yeah. now in October two thousand twenty one <coughs> near Cologne. This is okay. cool. Cool. I, yeah. I will keep my ears and their eyes open there. I want to check this out. I want yes, to check this out. maybe you have to also unpack your instrument one day. Like for uh, uh, next year we're playing with Faun, but maybe years later it's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, yeah, all right. Um, I don't know. I, I just watched the clock and we're actually talking already for quite some time. Um, Oh, it's amazing. I thought, oh, well, maybe it's too sad. There's not so much to talk about Corona, but now it's really right. nice, actually. I could talk for hours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it, it went by very, very quickly. I was just, yeah, it was a bit talk when I watched uh, the clock. So, but um, yeah, before I uh, let you go, like, is there anything you would like to share with your fans in particular or any thoughts you would like to share? To now people will tell me a crazy hippie because it's an Osho Osho quote. Oh, yeah. uh, yes, Osho has quite. He was collecting Rolls Royce and something that's no so good. But he said, "Times of disaster make you aware of the reality as it is. It is always fragile. So times of disaster are very revealing. They don't bring anything new into the world. They simply make you aware of the world as it is. They wake you up." Cool. I think it's a really nice quote because it's you, pretty smart, yeah. Yes, everything is always fragile, and maybe now we're a little aware of it. And hey, that's what's really important in our life. Maybe, mm -hmm. hopefully. Yeah, it's it's a good thing, and yeah, let's try to learn that, because yeah. I think that as a result of learning that, it will keep you thankful for what you have, because you learn that you can also lose that. Yeah, I never loved my garden so much. I love every bush. In the morning, I go to every bush and say, "Thank you, God, for bringing you." <laughs> <laughs> Not really, but it's without the garden, I would be really sad. And I thought, oh, this little piece of land makes me very happy every day. Cool. Yes. That's good to hear. Oh, yes, yes. And to all the people there, stay strong, like really take it serious. Try to do your best on discipline, not to keep the distance, but also do something useful with your time. I think it's really important to use the time. Cool. Yes. I agree. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for all your thoughts. It was, apart from what we do here, it's just, it was just cool to talk to you again. And uh, yeah, be safe, say hello to your girlfriend. And yeah, I just wish you a very, very good time. Thank you Take so care. much for inviting me over. All the best to you and your family. Thank you. Thank you. Take Thank care. you. Hey, bye-bye. Hey.